We are now doing module eight, which is the start of the uh, measure phase. We're going to first look at process analysis and documentation. Uh, all right, look, first of all, we'll do an overview of the uh, measure phase, and then we'll actually get into the subject of this particular module. In the measure phase, we'll focus on gathering the information necessary to complete the project. Uh, we know uh, what our overall issues are that we're going to explore. We have a general plan for uh, attacking that as far as that exploration, but now we actually have to start gathering the data. What we want to do is understand where we're at as of this moment to get an as-is measurement and get our baseline and get where to fully understand the current state uh, to accumulate enough data so we can do an intelligent anal analysis of that data in order to determine uh, what we need, need to do moving forward. So, we'll first of all uh, detail out our processes. We'll dig down. We have our high-level process map, basically a high-level SIPOC for as is, and now we're going to drill down and get it in farther, farther, in greater, greater detail so we can fully understand where we need to uh, focus our efforts. Of course, we're going to have to decide what metrics we're going to be appropriate for our processes, where we're going to be measuring for defects, for cycle time, whatnot. And we, with each metric, we have to be able to uh, do an analysis uh, of it. We have to have a system for doing the uh, analysis of our measurement that identifies and quantifies any common error in the metric because not all metrics are created equal. Each metric has certain issues. If you just look at the data superficially, you may end up with an erroneous uh, conclusion. So we have to have a system for analyzing each metric. And then finally, uh, we have to sort of estimate our process baselines. Okay. How are our processes running today? We need to know where we're at, because if we don't know where we're starting, we won't know uh, where to go, because we know where we're at, we have our goal, we see what this is the gap, and then we can focus. So, first thing we need to do is, of course, uh, detail out our process maps. We already discussed process maps in the second module, uh, and how to create them. What we now do is we uh, break them down to the greater and greater detail. We will uh, talk to our stakeholders, we'll do our observations, um, we will look at documentation and from there determine uh, what are the sub-steps, uh, tasks, activities that each process has, uh, get a finer grain of where the handoffs are, where our inputs are, where our outputs are, get a better understanding of our suppliers, where things are coming from them, how things are flowing to our customers, what decisions are being made, and get a, enough detail that we really have actionable information to be able to focus on our efforts as where we need to measure our uh, throughputs, defect rates, and whatnot. Uh, one of the great things about these things is you can start looking at the complexities of your processes. You start looking at the wait a second, this is really, really complex. We could really like simplify things, although we're not going to jump to a solution quite yet. But you can sort of focus on, well, this is pretty complex. Let's study how we can um, simplify this process. You get a better understanding of who your stakeholders are, because at the first blush, you might have missed some people. Now we say, oh yeah, well this, this particular process is done over um, in the in marketing department because they, they need their input from those guys, uh, so we have to include them. And the goal, of course, is to look at redundant, unnecessary decisions act and tasks and ways to simplify. Uh, later on, we'll talk about how we identify value-added and non-value-added activities and how we can cut waste and various activities. Uh, engaged in order to make our processes more efficient. However, all this has to start with a detailed process map so we understand what we're doing today and uh, know where to focus our efforts. Then there are flow charts. They're pretty standard. Uh, everybody, uh, pretty well everybody is familiar with how they look like. And that basically is a way of sort of uh, uh, going mapping a process uh, that's being performed and how different shareholders perceive a particular process or problem. I have my view of the process and I will have a flowchart that represents that. Somebody in a different department will see their process a bit differently with different handoffs. So we want to basically have various charts in there so I can see, well, you know, how does the um, uh, receiving see it? How does shipping see it? You know, how does the uh, first phase of manufacturing see it? So what we're looking for is a lot of decision points because that 
cause us to waste time. You have to wait for somebody to make a decision or for something to be approved. And it also can create adverse variations uh, if the wrong decisions are made. One of the starting points, of course, is to analyze our work documents. You know, we can look at documentation on our uh, existing documentation on the processes, existing uh, process maps, existing float charts, existing SOP manuals, uh, run books, whatever we have, you know, instructions posted up on machines, and then we can use that to, as a starting point. However, the caveat here is you cannot fully depend on these. As I said earlier in this course, there are three views of a process how we think it is, how it really is, and how we want it to be. So the documentation represents how we think the process is. People may be taking shortcuts, people may have added steps, uh, people uh, may be doing ad hoc processing, workarounds, certain processes. Um, unless we actually observe the process being done, that we actually stand there at the shop, watch them do it, or staple ourselves to the, work, to the work and follow that piece of work through the entire process, uh, we will not have a full and complete understanding of how the process is actually done. So this is the end of the process and, uh, analysis and documentation uh, in this module. We did a quick overview of the measure phase and talked about uh, the next steps as far as doing our process analysis. Uh, we will then continue on with uh, uh, further uh, steps in module 9 and onward in order to define how we can measure our existing processes and analyze that data.